Hey everyone, this is Kevin from thechesswebsite.com and today we're going to be looking in on day number two of the 2017 Champion Showdown. This is a head-to-head -head battle. There's eight of the top chess players in the world. They're matched up against one individual person and they play that individual through 30 games over a four-day span. Our competitors that we're going to be looking at today is Nakamura versus Topolov. In day one, they played four games of rapid chess at 30 minutes apiece. There is no time increment on top of that. So it's 30 moves or 30 minutes for all of their moves. And both sides got a victory. Nakamura had two victories. Topolov had one victory and they tied one. So Nakamura is up a game. There's different points awarded for each day when you get a win. Uh, but all things created equal, just know that Nakamura is up uh, a game overall after day one. So we're going to be looking at a day number two and Nakamura starting off game number one that we're going to be looking at today and he has the white pieces. He starts out with pawn to e4 and Topolov responds with pawn to c5. Now both of these players have played uh, a little bit different than what we're used to seeing from top level play. Uh, we've seen Nakamura defend against the pawn e4 from Topolov all tournament with pawn to uh, c6 and Topolov has tried his own variations but today he's trying something different. Now he's playing the Sicilian defense so we see pawn to c5 Sicilian defense knight f3 pawn d6 pawn d4 Capture, knight recaptures here on d4, knight f6, and then knight to c3. This is the open Sicilian. This is the main line. Uh, this is probably what 80-85% of Sicilian games go down the path of. And from here is where most people would say, you know, what type of Sicilian defense uh, did they play? Did they was it a Nidorf defense with pawn to a6? Was it more of a classical defense with knight to c6? Or did they try to be more aggressive with uh, a dragon defense of pawn to g6? Or was it an accelerated dragon uh, and they played pawn to g6 a move before this? And this is where we, we start to say, okay, this is, this is what it was. And uh, Nakamura decided to go ahead and play pawn to a6. This is the Nidorf defense. This is the most popular that you see at high level play. And there's lots of ways that white can respond to this. The pawn to a6 stops a lot of the threats that white wants to have. His Both of his knights and his bishop can easily come to b5, put a lot of pressure on the king because it's going to be a few moves before the king can cast on the king side. This pawn here on e7 is blocking the bishop, so it's going to be a while before castle on the king side. Very important square for this pawn on a6 to come to, uh, to stop any threat coming to this b5 square. White can bring his bishop to c4, start to attack this f7 square, which is weakened early on because the king is the only piece that's, that's uh, defending this. Could even come bishop to e3, start to develop his pieces on the queen side, cast on the queen side if he wanted to. Uh, but Topolov decides to play a little bit differently and play pawn to f3. Not something we generally see too often uh, from white, but this is a rapid game and they only have 20 minutes today so not a lot of time for each of these players to be thinking and so you can see a lot of the preparation that comes in from both sides because they don't have time to think it's all about what they studied and came prepared for nakamura responds with pawn to e6 some of the other moves you may see in this position would be pawn to e5 is fine uh, more that classical knight to c6 as we talked about before or even if you want to get your queen involved queen to b6 Threatening the center of the board is also popular. But decides to go ahead and play pawn to e6, bishop here e3, and then pawn to h5. So you can tell Nakamura has a plan in place. He's not going to be castling on the queen side because he's already has the semi-open file, losing his pawn on the c file. So pawn to h5 even says, I may not castle on the king side of the board, but I'm going to be pretty aggressive starting to attack my opponent. From White's perspective, he looks at this. He's already weakened his king side of the board with pawn to f3, so he's more than likely going to be looking to to castle on the queen side, start to attack his opponent on the king side of the board. Topolov, bishop to c4, developing, getting into the center of the board. Queen here to c7, bishop back here, b3. This is where Bobby Fischer used to bring his bishop back quite often 
against the Sicilian defense. Many times the next move for him would be pawn to a3 and he would even hide his bishop back on a2. Really liked it to control this long uh, light square diagonal here from white but brings it back here to bishop b3. Knight c6 just simple development. Queen to d2 opening up the opportunity to castle on the queen's head if he wants to. Bishop e7 castle on the queen's side. Knight to a5 attacking the bishop right here and decides to go ahead and bring his king over here to b1. Uh, wants to make sure that it is protecting uh, this a2 pawn if it needs to because the bishop can fall at any time from the knight. Bishop to d7 completing his development here besides the, the castling of his king. Pawn to g2 just pushing forward a little bit and then we see pawn b5. So both sides recognizing where they want to attack. Black Nakamura looking to attack on the queen side of the board and Topolov saying, yeah, I know you're not gonna castle on the queen side. I'm gonna start pushing over here on the king side of the board. Pawn to h3, just consolidating the control of the g4 square right here. And then pawn to b4, just starting to uh, attack his opponent even further, starting to force him to move. Knight comes back here to e2. Had some other options, could have easily played knight to a4. Then knight takes on b3, we see an exchange, pawn recaptures on b3, queen down here, uh, a5 if he wanted to, now starting to attack on the king side of the board, uh, but decides to, maybe I wouldn't say play it safe, uh, but decides not to worry about uh, this attack going on the queen side of the board and just bring his knight back here to e2, positioning to attack on the king side of the board. Pawn to e5, uh, and this is getting the defender from this bishop here on b3. Black does want to exchange here on b3, uh, but if he were to just exchange right away, then the knight could recapture here on b3, and white has a pretty fine position. He doesn't have to give up uh, any of his pawns as far as a double pawn structure, weaken his queen side of the board. So black recognizes this and says, well, let's first move that knight out of the way with a simple move, pawn to e5. Always be looking on your games to see how is my opponent going to recapture if they're going to recapture with one of their minor pieces, in this particular case, a knight. How do I get that knight away from the square? This is a great place for Nakamura to move that knight. Knight comes over here to f5, uh, and then we see the capture here on b3. Now, what was surprising is how Topolov decided to recapture. Many times, if it's not a center pawn, you're going to be capturing towards the center of the board, meaning pawn to b3. Uh, this also makes it more difficult for your opponent right here to attack uh, any vulnerability of your king, but he decided to go ahead and take with his c pawn away from the center of the board. I think this does open him up for some strong attacks, especially with his opponent still having uh, two of his bishops on board. So curious, uh, you know, from Topolov's perspective, as he was preparing for uh, this variation, why he decided to go with pawn takes on b3. Not the most common move that we see. Bishop takes here on f5. We see the pawn recapture, queen over here to b7, attacking this pawn right here, forcing the rook to come over f1. So you can see Nakamura starting to be the aggressor, and white really being more of the playing defense, getting his rook behind to defend, uh, and just waiting to see what Nakamura does. Black starts to push forward with pawn to d5, one of his past pawns on the board. Pawn up here to f4, and then pawn d4. If you have a pass pawn, one of the rules in chess is continue to push that and just put more pressure on your opponent. This gives black more space, uh, starts to just mitigate the opportunities that white has to really develop their pieces and control the center of the board. Black has full control of the center of the board right here. And you can see that black forcing white to come back here to g1. Probably worse if he takes, let's say, pawn takes on e5 uh, and then pawn recaptures here on e3. Uh, queen takes knight here to d5. Now he's really, really pressuring his opponent. Uh, White decides, let's not do that. Instead, decides to go ahead and bring his bishop back here to g1. Now knight to e4, attacking the queen. Queen comes back here to e1. And then pawn f6, solidifying the pawn chain right here from black. Pawn takes, pawn recaptures, uh, knight back here to c1. So uh, Toplov is 
sitting back here with all of his material on the first rank. Nakamura sitting with two central pawns, both of which are pass pawns. Uh, he has all of his pieces in the center of the board, uh, only his rooks back here on the eighth rank. So all things considered, uh, Black definitely has an advantage, and Topov is going to have to to really maneuver around to get out of this predicament. Nakamura decides to get Castle on the king side. This is not for a king side safety, uh, but he just wants to make sure that his rook's gonna be coming over here. And for the time being, uh, thinks it's a little bit better with his king here on g8 than it is here on e8. Pawn up to a g4. So it says, yeah, I got to attack on the, the king side of the board. I have really nothing else going for me. None of my pieces can be coordinated because they're all here on the first rank. And then you see pawn a5 says, okay, let's attack on the queen side of the board. Bishop h1 attacking the pawn. Bishop here to d6. Nice central square for the dark square. And for Nakamura, his bishop's really just playing defense right now. But it's locking down and making sure that he controls the center of the board with these pawns. Topolov pushes forward, queen to e2, pawn h4, rook here to e1, knight down here, a g3, it is an outpost with the pawn here attacking uh, the queen. White decides, let's go ahead and exchange that material, and that's completely fine with Nakamura. Pawn to g3, just another thing for White to worry about. Uh, while it's going to be difficult to hold on to this pawn because there's so much material that White can throw at it, that really just allows black to focus on the center of the board and make white spend some time and energy to take care of this pawn here on g3. So queen up here to e4 and Nakamura says that's completely fine. If I don't have to worry about your queen, I'm going to win just because I have center control and I can really put a lot of pressure on you. My bishop's going to be better. There's pawns all over the board. It can control the board a little bit better than one knight, which does tend to fare better if there's just pawns on one side of the board. He can hop around and control just one side of the board a lot easier. Rook takes here on e4 and then pawn a g6. Knight up here to d3, attacking the pawn, but the bishop is doing a good job holding that down. Pawn to a g2, and then a rook over here, g1, using a couple moves from white to take back this material. Pawn takes on f5, pawn recaptures, rook comes down here to f5, and then you can see two moves from white to get this material. And both sides are equal in material, but black has a better pawn structure. Two pawns in the center of the board, they're both passed. Yes, white does have a passed pawn over here on the H file, uh, but just doesn't have as much support for that. And then he has double pawns here on the B file. So gonna be very difficult for Topolov to hold on to this, especially with Nakamura being such a very good rapid player. Uh, he's used to these type of positions and extending his lead with little time on the clock. King to f7 with the queens off the board decides it's now time to get his king involved into the board. Rook over here to e2. King down here f6. And knight f2. Rook to c8. Pawn up here to h4. He has to try something, but it's just so difficult to find a great move. Rook down here f3. Rook over to g4. Not really sure what he's doing. As soon as you uh, have these rooks no longer connected, they're just so much weaker than they were before. Rook to e3 attacking this says, yeah, I would love to just exchange right here. Bring my pawn down to e3. You're going to have to worry about that. Then I can really apply my dark square bishop to defend that square here on e3. Rook to e4 says, I'm not going to be doing that. But hey, that's fine. I'm just going to make sure that you... Go down even more material because I think I can win this in game. Pawn to f5. Met up here to uh, e4. Bishop e7 attacking this pawn here on h4. Knight back to g3 attacking the king. King to e6. Just centralizing. This is great for black because his king is involved. The king here on b1, he can't get involved. It's blocked off because this rook here is on c8. So a really really making sure that white can't get all of his pieces involved into the action right here. Pawn up to h5, a bishop down to a g5, getting ready if he wants to with a threat of rook to c1. Checkmate has to stop that threat. Rook to c2 decides, okay, uh, 
don't worry about that. I'm going to come to the other open file, which is the F file currently. Rook to F8, getting ready to swing down and attack his opponent. Pawn up to A4, King to D5, Rook up here to C7, Rook down here to F3. Uh, and at this particular point, White decides to resign. He sees no way to really hold on uh, to the game, just doesn't think it's going to go well, and so decides to go ahead and give Nakamura the win. So Nakamura at this point is up two games on his opponent. Always good coming into day two to win the first game as the black pieces. Sometimes people always ask, well, why would someone resign in a position? Uh, and just if you're not seeing exactly what's going to happen, Topolov is not able to hold on to this knight here on g3. And so let's let's look at where he could go. Uh, the first option we see, which is completely awful because he would lose, is uh, e4. King's going to take it. If it comes up here to f5, uh, then the rook is going to take it. If it comes down here to h1, then rook f1 check. He's going to lose the knight right here. If he decides to play knight to e2, then pawn d3 just puts nail in the coffin as we talked about before knight can't come down here to g1 because rook to f1 that's going to be bad if he comes up to g g3 or f4 he's going to lose it as well from the rook if he comes to c3 he's going to lose it from the pawn and if he comes back here to c1 then rook to f1 with the threat of the the rook taking uh, even the bishop taking and most notably just the pawn coming down here to d2 depending on where the rook is the rook may try to chase the king around the board they can always just hide behind here on e4 but assuming the the rook is still there could always just play pawn to uh, d2 the Knight can't move, it's pinned down. Uh, and so all in all, going to end up losing. If the king moves, and you can kind of see what's going to happen, uh, then black can just easily take this material right here. So at the end of the day, Topolov knew he was going to lose that knight. Not going to go well. <laughs> Nakamura still has these two pawns in the side of the board. He can push up and get an easy victory here. So that is the first game on day two, and they're playing six on day two. Quite a few games going on on day two, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this game. Uh, one of the more exciting games we've seen in a while. We just don't see a lot of Sicilian defense, especially the Nidorf defense. So always good to see something different and some of the preparation that both of these players have coming into the Champions Showdown. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.